Hey Mugams, how are you doing? I hope you're doing all right because in today's video, I'll be convincing you to read my favorite books, the books I like based on their first line. So first, in my channel, I don't like to keep up with the trends because I like to give up more book reviews and not a lot of uh, trendy book hauls and recommendations and book tags. But this one was very intriguing. I came up uh, with it. I looked up on book talk and I saw this new trend taking place and on YouTube as well. And then I was very intrigued by the whole setting that is convincing people to read the favorite books by the first line so we'll start off with a friendly book and a familiar one too so that one is crooked kingdom so this one is the collector's edition and it's very huge on my hands i just love this book six of crows and crooked kingdom are, are really of a memory thing in fact a lot of nostalgia uh not mentioning that i read this book like two months ago but still they bring a lot of nostalgia uh, looking back at shadow and bone and the reviews that i've given to them and this is definitely a favorite book of mine and it takes off to an adventure start and then there are a lot of uh, elements in it a lot of concepts that are discovered here um, a lot of uh, things i just love about the whole storytelling and the settings so the first line of this book is what am i doing here the thought had run through Willen's head at least six times a day since he had met Carsbreaker. So this one is a sequel to the Six of Crows book. And starting off with the words, what am I doing here, is kind of really describe the whole vibe of this book. Because these friends are lost in a place where they don't have any job to do. And then they're kind of like scattered and lost. Different people and different events are happening, different things that are taking place. And since it's a sequel to Six of Crows, they've kind of forgotten what they are they don't have an highest to plan they're just going on uh, some ways until they find their way through what they're really supposed to do and then it's kind of like um a misadventure and that kind of really describes the whole vibe of this entire book and that's what i love about crooked kingdom it's kind of like uh, people the found family getting their way after each misstep and mishaps and then everything and they're going to this final adventure together and there are so many things and so many concepts that are taking place here hence this is why crooked kingdom is one of my favorite books regardless of what the common media has to say so the next favorite book of mine is Six of Crows, the prequel to Crooked Kingdom, and we'll see the first line. Cars Bricker didn't need a reason. So this one's kind of peculiar because they are starting off with introducing the characters and indeed Cars Bricker didn't need to have to have a reason for the entire highs they are planning and the entire the things that they're going through. And this just this entire whole mass of the book. And uh, this line, this first line was just descriptive for the whole cast of characters because they obviously didn't need a reason to do this highest except that a lot of money is on hand. So this book was kind of like giving off the vibes of peeking into another uh, once in a lifetime adventure that we don't have, that we aren't destined to go through. But then there's this whole cast of characters that you just love, love, love and the introductions between them. So the first line kind of describes the whole characters and the cast and then they are going through the same thing they hate each other but they are only bonded by this money that is in hand for the highest and then they later go on to discover faces of themselves and the others and it's kind of tying the knots together it's kind of untangling and that's what i love about six of crows and crooked kingdom the most so the next book is one that i've given a lot of thought of whether to consider it as my favorite book or just go with the rantings uh, that other readers have to provide their thoughts and everything so it's allegiant allegiant is one of i wouldn't say my favorite books but it's just one of the books that i just most love i think it's not appropriate to say to consider this as one of my favorite books because it had nothing of that element that i just uh, have in my favorite books but then this is also one of the books that i just most love so this is the first book that has gotten me into reading uh, i began with this book and then i discovered a lot of dystopia hunger games based on etc etc and then i just totally fell in love with reading and that's how i came to this stage i owe this book a lot of debt and this is really old so that's why hence this ugliness and mess so we'll see the first line tris 
I pace in our cell in United headquarters, her words echoing in my mind. My name is Hedith Pryor and there is so much I'm happy to forget. This book is the sequel to Insurgent. I believe that book was a bit of a flop, even to me. There's a lot of action elements in it, but then again, it wasn't just like divergent. The first book was amazing, but the second book, it was a bit of a flop. I could, I could accept it. But the third book, it was okay. It was okay. But then the thing that I love most about Allegiant is that it's morals and then there are these two characters, they are switching POVs to St. Tobias and then they are going through a lot of things and they are learning from their experiences. That's what I love about it the most. They are kind of comparing uh, their experiences and they are kind of thinking back on what they've been through and what the personalities they are now. And I like the just the morals and the amazing stuff that is in this book because the other books have failed to provide me that. They're just fictional. They are just like things that don't happen in real life. They don't have this kind of morality to them, but Allegiant says otherwise. That's why I love this book at first sight. And the first line explains the ending to Insurgent, that cliffhanger. So it starts off with kind of a disappointing beginning, but then it goes on and it moves on just like how the story and the whole trilogy does. The next book is Sapiens. This one is not fictional, it's non-fiction and it's scientific. So I've got a bit of a hitch on the first line and explaining the whole why the book why thingy. But I'll do it, I'll try to do it anyway. About 14 billion years ago, matter, energy, time and space came into being in what is known as the Big Bang. The story of these fundamental features of our universe is called physics. So it starts off with explaining what our universe is and that's what basically this book does but it's kind of gets in delves into the depths of biology how humans were made into this wise and intelligent species called sapiens how we just dominated the world and how our communication became expansive and how we were considered homo sapiens this book is kind of easy and conversational so there's not a lot of scientific stuff you don't feel like this scientific stuff but indeed there are a lot of things and chapters in this book so it's kind of like a textbook a simplified textbook without the scientific terms and i love this this is so easy to read and i recommend this to everyone the next book is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and I'm reading it from an ebook copy. The first line of the book is The moose is a lie, Stevie Bell said. At least it's kind of humorous because the entire book is kind of the plot is thickening by every page. It's, it wants you to hook on to the pages of the books and it's kind of very intense and it's just like how a mystery novel is supposed to be, especially a murder mystery. Stevie Bell is our protagonist and then there is a murder, a terrible one that happens in her school and she's going to investigate it. There are a lot of plots inside it and then she also receives a letter that is just the point of the entire story. It's signed by someone called True devious this is my personal favorite because i did not expect this book to be like this it was unexpected unpredictable just like how a mystery novice is supposed to be i read a lot of agatha christie's and they start off with a very serene and calm beginning but this one is not like that it starts off with a tumultuous beginning on stevie bell entering a school that her parents disapprove of it's not uh, ordinary it's not for ordinary students it's extraordinary and for brilliant students and her parents especially hated anything that was out of the ordinary boundary and the setting was amazing as well and i just love the plot and everything it was like a thrill wild ride my next favorite book is Ace of Spades and this kind of gives off the dark academia vibes and the reason that I liked it the most was that I didn't feel like it was a book at all. It was a 400 page book, yes I do realize that but then it was so short and I just liked the whole concept of the book. It has a lot of uh, different concepts and things and morals to the society and how they are treating uh, black people and stuff like that and I loved it the most because it was justifying story i have not read a lot of books like this that is set off in a dark academia theme and it kind of uh, ex explains these concepts to children the first line is first day back assemblies are the most pointless practice ever and it kind of hints at the storytelling because the storytelling the whole deal of the book was just like this in simple forms and it was simple 
it wasn't a lot of like mystery novel that I would read, but it was thrilling. It was unpredictable, and I liked the character. This and I liked Chiyamaka. So there are a lot of things to untangle, a lot of mysterious doors to open, and this one is iconic. Am I ready to this? Am I ready to this? Yes, I'm ready to this. The House of the Cerulean Sea is my personal favorite of all times, and it's one of the best. One of the wonderful magical and one of the extraordinary books that i have read because it was explained in the middle grade form to middle grade children but it's supposedly ya and it takes a twist on that but the characters the storytelling it was just amazing and i loved the book and i just plainly loved the book i have a review and i'll link it down in the description below there's also gonna be a book review next week as well and it may as well as be one of my favorite books so the first line of the book is oh dear linus baker said wiping the sweat from its book this is the most unusual yes the entire book is the most unusual because it discovers things it is it discovers like the monsters and stuff that are not really supposed for middle grade but then it kind of is explains it um in a magical way is the most magical way as possible it was like reading harry potter but then really 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 different from harry potter it kind of gives that vibe so the next book is also dark academia yes i do realize that i read a lot of dark academia books because they just motivate me to you know go in more dark academia style so this book is a study in charlotte and i loved the book and the series as well so i've only read the first book so it's not very reader of me to explain the entire series and how it went through so i'll just tell the first line of the first book the the first time i met her was at the tail end of one of those endless weekday nights you could only have at a school like sharing thought so this whole thing uh the whole murder the whole murder mystery takes place in a school called sharing thought just like truly devious and this is born between these two characters the first line it does not have a lot to dwell on and explain so this just explains this amazing bond between these two characters uh, that are taking place in this story and i just loved the plot and the things that are happening in the story and study in charlotte will always be one of my favorite series and if i'll try to read the next two books without dnfing them and without procrastinating the next book is a book that i'm currently reading going to finish reading it and this one is very recent i believe so this is the anthropocene reviewed by john green the first line of the book is it is may of 2020 and i do not have a brain well suited to this and that just explains how my brain is not well suited to the entire book i love the general uh, facts general knowledge facts in the book i'm a lot like an academia girl book smart stuff like that so this book is is amazing it was amazing it was like a short ride of this anthropocene which is the current geological age on this earth on this planet and all the things that it's going through it's just suddenly going from one dimension to another and i liked the book entirely i just loved it so the next book is one that i'm eager to get my hands on the physical copy and that is the project hail mary by andy Weir. and it's a lot like martian the other book that the author has written so the first line is what's two plus two it's kind of ironic because this entire book is complex and uh, it goes through a lot of concepts and space traveling things and a lot of mysteries and plot holes but what's two plus two that's an amazing and an iconic first line and this book is also one of the iconic books I ever owned and one of my favorites as well. So that's it for the video. Please like, share, subscribe and support my channel. If you want a lot more videos like this and book reviews and cool trendy concepts in the world of booktube, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button and I'll see you in another video. Stay happy, stay safe, keep reading.